Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Andrew Riggs, and I was on a hike yesterday when I got the call and they asked if I would like to share. And at that point, I was just really meditating on this very simple fact that the secret to revival is just being in the Word of God. Yeah. That's it. I mean, the secret of revival is just being in the Word of God. And then I said I was just going to freestyle it and kind of go off of there. But then I really started to had a couple hours and I started to just really open up and just say, okay, God, what is it that you would have me to share? And so he, I wrote this thing and I'd like to share it with you guys. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So once again, uh, my name is Andrew. I'll be 40 in a couple of months. And the title of my story is, and time went on, but first this happened. And time went on, but first this happened. There I was. In Hollywood, California, with a stripper I just met in Las Vegas a week before when I turned 21. And it was that stripper who told me that I had walked away from God. And she was right. And in a moment of time, it was like my life was rewound backwards, back to the cake room in college. But first, this happened. I remember the first time that we met. The white light surrounded my face all wet. The tears streamed down, I was given a crown of vision renowned of heavenly sound. I saw armies marching, a general something of incredible loving, filling all of me. Relieving my soul, he filled me so full of the first real thing that I ever did know. Lord, I love you, hug you, trust you. So beautiful, your majestic love blew. Me in a way, in a kind of a way that I'd never seen until that day. Take this letter and make me better. Holy, righteous, and forget all. About the past and the times I failed. Forgive us my future as your hands were nailed. A savior jailed that heaven did hell. But the place of hell that couldn't prevail. And bound and change your preacher prevail. In an empty cell with an angels dwelled. But first, this happened. In kindergarten. I remember laying in bed wondering what will happen to me when I die. Do I just cease to exist? Will it be all black and just darkness? I asked my mom what happens to me when I die. And she said, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. I didn't know what that meant, but I like to play basketball. <laughs> and time went on. I remember playing basketball at Jacksonville Elementary. And we were done. There were some older guys who just witnessed to us. They were trying to lead me and my buddy in the sinner's prayer. And I remember thinking at that time, my buddy needs this. <laughs> and time went on. In junior high, I liked to snowboard and skateboard. I actually started skating to keep my balance in the off season. Nowadays, it'd be like the one wheels. And back in the day, there weren't any skate parks. It was just all street skating. Except that there was this ministry called Campus Life, and they had a warehouse full of skate ramps. We would go to this Bible study, and then we would skate. This guy leading the thing shared this with me. Ask Jesus to reveal himself to you in a way you can understand. That night I went home, and I got down on my knees, and I asked Jesus to reveal himself to me in a way I could understand. And wham! I saw a super vivid picture of the crucifixion, and I thought to myself, no way, this is way too freaky for me. <laughs> and time went on. High school. I was a South Bedford High School lunchtime. We went to this Bible study at the house across the street from the lawn that was jam-packed. And at the end, they offered to pray to receive Christ to close, his, close our eyes and raise our hands if we wanted to receive Jesus. I remember raising my hand, and then I peeked and saw that there was this one kid who didn't have his hand up. So I got embarrassed, and I put it down. And then time went on. A little while later, I went to Applegate Christian Fellowship, and they had just got back from Camp Bradley, and they were giving away candy. I had never seen so much candy in my whole life. They were just throwing it out there, and all the kids were fighting over it. And then a guy came and led worship on the guitar, and I had never seen that before, and it radically moved me. I went home and told my parents I wanted to go there, but I was discouraged too because we were part of a different denomination. And time went on. I was about three things in high school, playing soccer, working on trucks, and being popular. And after all that ended, I went to Oregon State, and I was strutting my South Clifford soccer goalie t-shirt. And I walked by a guy on, on campus, and he looked at me, like, and he said, Medford? <laughs> like, under his, like, South Medford? And it was very shocking for me. I was a little fish in a large pond, and it crushed me. College. I experienced what they call top dog syndrome. My world came crashing down. Everything I cared about was gone. I wasn't in the fraternities. Friends weren't easy to come by. I lived 50 miles away from campus. My brother was three years older and had already done the college thing. I had a slight pain in my chest and I knew it was my time to die. I was currently sitting in the cake room, which is the room where we kept the 
Come on, somebody. What? For 10 points, it's a room where we kept the close. It was called the Pip Picnic Pump, which was a tap that was on top of the cake that had this gnarly chrome skull with these red jeweled eyes. And the way that you pumped it, you just pumped it like this and like this. And I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you're in kindergarten and you don't know what happens to you when you die. I don't know if you're in elementary school and you've just said the sinner's prayer. I don't know if you're in junior high and you're all about your hobbies. I don't know if you're in high school and you've left your first love and are caught up in the pride of life that carries the world deceitfulness of riches. I don't know if you're in college and you're drunk in the spirit in the cave room of the kingdom just sitting back fat and happy in his grace just pumping up the death. But what death do we pump up? So Riggs, where are you at now? I'm in the weight room of the kingdom, working out my salvation with fear and trembling. Here's the best move, ready? Down and then out. Jesus came down, snatched your sin out. He that knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Now I'm in the weight room, just waiting until Jesus comes back. That's waiting, W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. -G. What's that, you may ask? It's when you take something super heavy and you give it to God. We're in the, all in the weight room. You can relate. Chronic pain, divorce, depression, suicide, addiction, pride, shame, and fear. Think about it. If we want a gym membership, got the workout shoes, got the outfit, got the pre-workout, get to the gym, and there's no weights, no treadmills, no exercise bikes, how are we ever supposed to get in shape? Because you know that's the point of this life, right? To get in shape for eternity. We got the Bibles, we know the songs, we got the pre-workout, coffee. How silly it would be to not do any real work. Isn't that the number one critique of Christians that were posers, hypocrites? So what kind of tools do we have in this weight room? Faith, healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. But here's the thing about free will. It's all our choice on how deep we want to go. We can just stay in kindergarten, elementary, junior high, high school, college, or we can get ripped in the weight room, weight room. And you're not alone. We've got spotters go to failure. And I want to do that with you because now you're all a part of my story. And I don't know who you are in the story. You may feel like that stripper. You may feel like life has stripped everything from you, but I've got good news. Nothing happens to you. It only happens for you. For all things go together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Can you imagine being on a bench press and never asking for help? You just kept doing on reps. And I know some of you are so tired of just doing reps. Yeah. Jesus is the spotter because you can't handle the hell without him. You can't handle the hell without him. And I don't know who you are in the story. The person who embarrassed to put his hand up. The person who saw a vision who wasn't ready. The materialist person, the idolatrous person, the suicidal person, the depressed person, the divorced person. I'll be the stripper in the ready. I'll be the stripper in the story. Ready? Son. Daughter. All the titles are gone. And you're a son. And you're a daughter. And we find our identity in him. And that's my, share, that's my story. I want to share with you guys. Simple little story. The secret to revival is just being in the Word of God.